and welcome to another brand new edition of T Watches a Scary Movie. My name is T, and of course, we are talking scary movies. I appreciate y'all tuning in and for another brand new audio only episode of the show yes there is nothing wrong with your eyes we are on another audio only episode as i mentioned folks on the weeks to where i gotta actually do some work for the day job um i just don't have the time to get the show to the level of quality i'd like to produce for video shows so we just go to audio but we will be back to video only shows sooner than you think uh we should only have realistically uh two or three more shows here and then we'll jump back to video for a good chunk of change there but i appreciate you tuning in nevertheless remember new episodes go up every wednesday on the youtube page which if you get subscribed to the youtube page you'll get all the alerts for when any videos i upload go live we typically do premieres for the new episodes every wednesday night at 8 30 p.m mountain standard time and if you go to youtube.com slash c slash theron reynolds scary movie that'll give you all the info that you need you can get subscribed to the youtube page and get those alerts for when all of the new videos including episodes are going up for you i appreciate you subscribing i appreciate you catching up on our old episodes as well and in addition to that you know we do our watch parties after the new episode we typically are going to watch a movie together that had to do with the episode uh the movie in the episode we were just talking and then we also do scary tv watch parties though we are not doing one this week just due to the schedule unfortunately Uh, it was a very very busy week and just couldn't uh, unfortunately make that work so we won't be doing one this week but we'll get back to it next week though uh that will be coming back for y'all so something to look for too but keep in mind Tonight, right after this new episode, we're going to be starting at 9.15. We're going to be watching the first A Quiet Place. Yes, we're going to be watching A Quiet Place tonight here after our new episode. You don't want to miss that. It's an amazing film. Definitely something you want to check out. But... The only place to get the info on the watch parties as well as the link so you can join up is our Facebook group for T Watches a Scary Movie. So you got to go to facebook.com slash groups slash T Scary Movie. Again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash T Scary Movie. Go and join our Facebook group. You'll get a link to our watch parties when we're doing them. As well, you can also get and join in on our discussions that we have throughout the week about all the movie news that comes out or funny memes that we put up and stuff like that as well, too. It's a great time. It's a great group. Join up with that as well. We would love to see you in there. So, folks, we got some big things happening here. Uh, as you have heard, and if you haven't heard already, A Quiet Place 2 was released, A Quiet Place Part 2, excuse me, was released last week. It is making a lot, a lot of money, and it is getting some fantastic reviews as well, too, even higher than the first. And that's pretty big to hear that this film is doing just as well and better than the original movie. That's That's really, really awesome to see because that really shows that John Krasinski uh, Krasinski set out to make, uh, he didn't want to make just money in this case here. He legitimately wanted to uh, put something good out that everybody was going to have fun coming in and watching. So that's pretty cool to to see that the response to a part two has already been incredible. I'm excited to see it. I'm going to get to go check it out myself later this week. Uh, So super, super awesome to see it's already getting some good reviews. Now, we are talking A Quiet Place, the original film, tonight. But uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the recent news that has come out in the past week or two here in the horror section. Uh, Recently, I did share that it was finally announced that the long-delayed and often-thought-canceled Dying Light 2 will be releasing on December 7th this year for Xbox One X and, or Xbox Series X and Series S, and the PlayStation 5. It is, it's coming. It is finally on its way here. Now, I take that with a grain of salt because you have to keep in mind uh, the original Dying Light was basically a launch title. Okay, it was basically a launch title for 
both the uh, the PS4 and the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. That's how long ago that game came out. And while they've been supporting it, they had a lot of DLC that came out for the original game. Um, they've been talking about this sequel endlessly and nothing's come out. And it was very much rumored that the game was canceled. I'm going to get it. And surprise, surprise, you're able to pre-order it now. And it is saying it's officially coming out this December. Now we'll see. For those of y'all that have never uh, played this game before, it's actually a really, really fun game, honestly. It's an open world uh, parkour first person shooter set around zombies. Um, basically, and it's been so long since I played it now, so this is all going off memory. I believe you're in South America and you're working as, uh, as aid relief for the South American city that has been besieged by a zombie plague. And you're there to basically help all the inhabitants in this town. But also, you can choose to uh, work against them by finding this zombie virus and giving it off to some nefarious beings. Now, I never beat the game. It was fantastic, though. I was having a lot of fun with it. But just like everything else, you have so many new games that comes out. You never have enough time to focus on that and come back to it. But hey, it's saying it's coming in December. And uh, yeah, if that's the truth, got to get back into it now. I do have a pretty good save there on my Xbox. So let me know if you are playing Dying Light, then maybe we got to get some game sessions going and get a few of us together to go murder some zombies. That is something we definitely might want to do together. Yeah, exciting, exciting news. Another new story to hit there. The new Evil Dead film, Evil Dead Rise. It was announced that this is going straight to HBO Max. Now think about that. When the pandemic hit last year, HBO Max made deals to basically bring all of Warner Brothers' new slate. So all their new movies that were set to come out in the theaters this year, they made a deal to where all those movies are hitting HBO the same day that they're hitting theaters. And for a window of 30 days, folks can check those films out on HBO Max. Of course, uh, we've seen things like Mortal Kombat, Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, The Upcoming Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, uh, In the Heights. Films like that have been releasing and they've been having a lot of success doing it this way as well too because if anything, it's been driving the box office numbers for all of these films. But Evil Dead Rise wasn't ever really a part of that. You know, uh, horror films typically with the pandemic have been still been pushing through to like either direct to direct to video basically direct to streaming or they have been getting these uh these theatrical releases because horror films typically don't cost that much but the fact that evil dead is evil dead rise is going straight to hbo max that's actually very worrisome to think about because that kind of implies that there's a problem here with this movie itself um i don't know i mean uh, keep in mind, this is a sequel to the original trilogy of Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, and Army of Darkness. This is not following the 2013 reboot at all. It's about a tale of strange sisters who reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh possessing, uh, possessing, possessing demons, uh, thrusting them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. It's very, very interesting um that this is going to be coming to hbo max as opposed to theater so if that's their intention then that's their intention for sure but i don't know i feel like this this couldn't have been made to be that way because it's a it's a name film it's a part of a franchise you don't release franchise films like this direct to streaming well unless you're a hellraiser movie that's that's going to streaming no matter what these days uh but if you're anything else you don't really go direct to video so i'm very curious to find out what's going on with this film the reason why um, the reason why it's going straight there. That's uh, I don't know if that's something to be concerned about or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then another story that I brought recently too. I talked about how the CW is bringing the second season of the horror reality show Killer Camp back to the CW this fall. Now, 
if you didn't catch out the uh, catch up uh, catch the first season of Killer Camp last year on the CW, this was a bit of a pandemic show. This was a show that was done in the UK, basically that was based around again a, a reality TV show format. You bring in a number of contestants who are basically playing camp counselors, and the idea was among these contestants, one of them is a killer. One of them is attempting to kill all the other contestants basically now the format was fun all right um you could figure out pretty quickly who was actually uh who, in, who the killer ended up being and they added a twist halfway through the show as well too that didn't add much to it either but it was still a lot of fun um i'm a big reality tv fan i love shows uh like the challenge um and that's it uh because i don't watch survivor i don't watch big brother or anything like that but i'm big on things like the challenge and uh and and, and all those like subsequent spinoffs and stuff like that so it was kind of fun to have a horror twist on that um their kind of gimmick was when they quote unquote killed one of the count uh camp counselors they would uh shoot this really fun and elaborate death scene which i thought was actually the hook of the show was getting to see each contestant get eliminated and how they would kill them on the show. I thought that was actually a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping that they cleaned up a lot of the production issues from season one to season two, because this is something I could actually find myself making sure to tune in for every uh, every year, you know? And the fact that they're doing it in the fall, because remember, this was a pandemic show. Um, I have to imagine this was never intended to be on the CW in the first place. But once all their shows basically kind of went on hi hiatus because of the start of the pandemic, I feel that they licensed this out to show it because they needed something to go. And now the second season, I think they officially decided, yeah, we're actually going to like put money into this and it's coming in the fall. So it's going to be here around Halloween time, which is the perfect timing for it. So uh, actually, if anything, I think we're actually going to start covering that this fall. So something for y'all to look forward to is that we are going to be uh, talking about killer camp this coming fall and reality shows are already always filmed in advance keep that in mind it's very rare for a reality show to be filmed live so we're going to avoid spoilers with that too because it would probably be very easy just google it and find that information out and come back to it but i'm excited to talk about it with you uh with all of you this coming uh this coming fall we're definitely going to be covering that uh together so yeah killer camp something to look forward to but Let's get to the main story we are talking tonight, which is A Quiet Place. Now, most people, when they think of John Krasinski, I'm sure they think of him from The Office, you know? But long gone are the days of pranking Dwight and trying to make it with Pam and then the ongoing adventures of Jim and Pam and Dwight in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, John Krasinski actually directed this film and he wrote it alongside Brian Woods and Scott Beck. And this is pretty big because this was John Krasinski's first big major film uh, for a studio. It's not the first film he's directed by any means there. Um, I believe this was his third film that he's done, but it was his first big studio film that he got to put together. And right away, A Quiet Place is so good. I think that similar to Jordan Peele with Get Out, He's immediately put himself in a position to be a name that's synonymous with new horror, okay? If you think about horror as a whole, there are certain names that we're always going to link together with that. You know, you're going to have guys like Wes Craven and uh, Toby Hooper. Um, guys like that will always be linked to it. You know, George Romero is in that list as well, too. Clive Barker is a part of that list as well. There's a lot of names that we say are synonymous with horror, and as we've hit the, these last 20 years, we've been having to get a lot of newer people involved with that as well. Jason Bloom, for example, is a name that's very much synonymous with horror with Bloomhouse. He's a part of that. Scott Derrickson is a name that's with that as well, too. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Peele is definitely on that list. But A Quiet Place has absolutely brought John Krasinski in that, uh, that conversation as well. Now, the plot is about the earth is currently besieged by aliens who hunt by sound. So basically you're trying to keep quiet because they, they have extreme sensitivity to sound. And it's, it's not, not necessarily that they hunt by that. The idea that we're given is that sound like literally did like it hurts them so much that they kill anything that's making noise at that point. They slaughter anything at all that they hear. And this film focuses on one family attempting to carve out an existence for themselves after they suffer a terrible tragedy at the beginning of the movie. Now, the movie starts 
with a pretty big gut punch and we're not given a heck of a lot of information on everything that's going on. You know, we don't start with what happened to the Earth in the first place. We don't get to see the invasion of Earth and the military fighting back and how we were all systematically defeated over a period of time. No, instead, we're starting. Things have, are, are already in place at this point. We don't know how long has gone by. But this family, the Abbott family, um, that uh, Krasinski and real life wife uh, uh, Emily Blunt portray, uh, you know, the head of the family. Family. And then their kids are portrayed by Noah Jew, Millicent Simmons, and uh, Cape, uh, Cade Woodward are portraying their kids. And when we meet this family, you know, they're not wearing shoes or any socks. We don't know why that is. Uh, they're in an empty, abandoned, like general store looking for supplies. It's clear that one of the kids um, is sick as the mom's looking for the right medicine to help him out. And the rest of the family is looking for supplies that they can use. Now, we're not told anything else. We're seeing newspaper clippings and stuff like that to give it implications on what could be going on. But we still don't know what's happening with this family. They're not talking to each other. They're all using sign language at this point as well, too. And that's one of the many incredible decisions that Krasinski makes about this movie. It is, hence the name, a very quiet place. The movie moves with so much caution. Whether we're watching this family eating dinner, gathering supplies, going about the menial tasks they have to do every single day, it's clear there's a scary tension in the air. The characters rarely actually speak to each other. When they do, it's at a whisper. And somehow, that keeps all of us quiet as well, too. And I think about that. When you're watching a horror movie, especially when you're watching a horror movie in theaters, which there's nothing like seeing a horror movie in theaters, all right? There's something fun about the fact that when you're watching something scary with other people, somehow you feel safer about that. And then there's also a lot of ways to alleviate that tension when you're watching horror movies with other people, too. Some people laugh. Some people scream. Some people are making jokes. And it just makes it that much more of an enjoyable experience. And there really is nothing like it. Like, yes, you know, you can watch action movies. You can watch comedy movies, have big laughs with that. You can watch musicals and laugh and sing along with the songs in there. But I do feel the experience of watching a horror film in theaters is just unreplicated. It is absolutely best in a busy theater with other people. And a quiet place. I don't know a single person who saw that in theaters who said that their experience was not that of just a hush over the entire crowd throughout the entire movie. Because again, you're basically almost watching a foreign film. The cast is using American Sign Language to mostly do the dialogue in this movie. And unless you understand American Sign Language, you're reading this movie just like you would with anything international with a bunch of subtitles. And for this being John Krasinski's first major studio film, that was a huge, huge risk. Because you do have a couple name actors in John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. And by not allowing them to really do Again, what's kind of brought us to those two over a bunch of the roles they've done in their careers by keeping them quiet through the majority of this film, it's a pretty big risk and it pays off. It honestly builds the tension of this film so much because at no point do we ever feel that anything's okay for them. Again, even the smallest task that they're doing, they're trying to make no noise at all. This isn't a case to where we're watching uh, like a zombie movie or a vampire movie and it's like, shh, be quiet. And then it's like, okay, they're gone. We can go ahead and get back to things. No, this family is on high alert the entire time. And what brings that tension even further is the fact that the incident that at the beginning of the film causes so much tension between every single member of this family. They go through just this horrible, horrible ordeal and it just hurts the relationship between everybody there. Most especially though, uh, with Simmons character, Reagan. We can sense that there's resentment amongst the rest of her family towards her about what happened at the beginning of this film. And it's even worse for her because her character is actually deaf. Her character is somebody who actually does have to utilize sign language to get by in this world. And so she's been living with this, basically, while the rest of her family, it's something that they had to pick up when all of this started happening in the first place. Now. Keep in mind in this case, she's kind of our lead in this film, all right? She is kind of uh, kind of our lead for this because, sure, you would think, 
all right, John Krasinski is the name on this here, but we're really seeing this through her eyes because we see how her relationships with the family hurt and how that affects the other members and what they're talking about with each other. And she gets brought up a lot amongst the, amongst everybody else. Um, one of the best things about this is that this film takes place over two days because again, it's something else that just highlights how terrible all of this is for the Abbott family. We start off um, a little bit over a year from where the rest of the film takes place. And after this, the events of the beginning of the film happen, we then fast forward over a year later at that point, and the rest of the movie takes place over the course of two days. And things that this family encounters is just downright insane. It's horrific. It's something that we rarely get to see people deal with in the course of these films, you know? Um, it is comparable in a way, I guess, to aliens, because when you think about aliens, the idea is, is that, you know, um, the Whalen yutani company finds out that this colony they sent on the home world of the, of the aliens, or, you know, we go back to Prometheus and alien covenant and all that's not the home world, but you get the idea, like the home world at the time that we knew of the aliens, um, they're not hearing anything from the settlers that were living there at that time. And so they send in a group of Marines to find out what's going on along with Ripley. And basically over the course of the next day and a half, all this bad shit goes down to them, obviously, as we've seen. Um, but even aliens, it felt like they had, mo they had moments of levity that even though, yes, they were being hunted and they're being hunted by xenomorphs that, you know, they have no conscience. They, you're not trying to understand them. They're just there to kill. There were still moments of breathing room in aliens, as crazy as that sounds to say. In a quiet place, you never really feel that. You never feel like our group of characters are ever actually safe. And it's not like anything too big is happening except for a pregnancy. We do find out Emily Blunt is pregnant. She has her new child is due at any time. And then when you start to consider the repercussions of that, we live in a world now to where anything that makes sound is likely going to be destroyed by these aliens. And you know what a newborn baby loves to do is to cry. So how can you possibly bring a newborn child into this dangerous world, knowing that could mean the death of that child and the death of you and everybody around that child too. And it's very, very, again, I use the word tension a lot, but it's very, very tense seeing how this family ends up having to deal with that specific scenario. Everybody in this film gets a chance to shine. Emily Blunt and Millicent Edmonds do some amazing acting here, having to convey so much emotion and nothing else but looks throughout this entire film. It works incredibly well, and those two women really, really carry this movie. And I mean that in a positive way, is that they make this movie something that cannot be missed. And that doesn't mean that John Krasinski, uh, Noah Jupe, or Cade Woodward don't do their own, uh, don't have their own effectiveness in this film, because they really, really do. And seeing, uh, seeing just this relationship between especially Krasinski's dad and uh, uh, Mil uh, Millicent Edmonds uh, Regan and how this relationship progresses throughout the entire course of this movie is probably one of the most heartwarming things that has been in a horror movie in, uh, in recent memory. Now, the aliens themselves. We do get to see them. And again, we, we are pretty positive that they are aliens in this film. Um, the design of them isn't necessarily something something terrorizing. It's very, very similar, I would say, to the look of like the Demi Gorgon in, uh, in uh, Stranger Things for sure. So if, if you've seen that, uh, it's, it's very, very reminiscent of that. I don't think there was any copying or anything like that. But I, I think you can definitely see a lot of similarities between those two. So the creatures themselves, it's not that the look of them is necessarily terrifying. It's just the idea of the speed of how vicious they are, how fast they are, and how they basically could take somebody out extremely, extremely quickly. And when we get multiple times, multiple times throughout this movie, which Krasinski was so, so, I say gracious, but gracious really is the right word because you might not expect to see the aliens that much or get to see them attacking and it's not like the body count in this film is uh, is that high. It's really not, actually. The body count is actually extremely low in this film. Matter of fact, I think it's only three. Um, let me see. One, two, three. 
three. I guess technically it's it, it's it, technically it's five. Technically it's five, but realistically it's three. Body count is not high at all in this film. It's about the same amount you would get in a modern day slasher film, honestly. Um, but Krasinski never lets up because we get multiple scenes of these characters having to encounter these aliens up close and how they have to get around them and they have to set up traps and set up distractions and stuff. And the entire time we're on the edge of our seats hoping, don't get caught, don't get caught, don't get caught, don't make any noises. Um, and the kind of things that they have to get around man it is bananas b-a-n-a-n-a-s for sure did not expect this to be as good as it was i legitimately did it um i figured it would be good because i like john krasinski and so he's got goodwill coming from me but i didn't think that this film would be as great as it was and the reaction to the first quiet place was pretty universally good like this film was is pretty well lauded amongst a lot of people and seeing that A Quiet Place Part 2, which just released here in the last week, is getting even better marks than the original, says so, so much about it. Um, and the fact that they had Killian Murphy to it, Killian Murphy makes everything, everything better. Uh, stroke of genius as well. Matter of fact, I don't know if anybody saw a recent interview that came up with Killian Murphy um, talking about how he, uh, he's, uh, he was such a big fan of John Krasinski and his work and how uh, how he loved the first Quiet Place film and he didn't want to hit John Krasinski up about it because he felt if he did, it would make him seem like he was looking for work like with him. And it turned out John Krasinski immediately wanted to use Killian Murphy for the sequel. Uh, like even, even without that, he wanted to use Killian Murphy for it. So it was a bit of cool kismet that came together with this film. I'm so excited to see part two because the the first film ends not on a cliffhanger, but it ends very much setting up for a sequel. And it does look like the sequel is going to pick up literally right from where the original film leaves off, um, which is exciting to see. So a lot of us, I know, are going to get a chance to see it this coming weekend. But I want to hear what you thought about A Quiet Place. Did you find uh, find it hard to get through this film knowing there wasn't a lot of dialogue and the, one, the, the dialogue that was there was either super quiet or it was happening through American sign language what did you think of that what did you think of the design of the aliens who have these like razor sharp claws talons whatever you want to call them just decimating anybody that they come across i want to hear what you thought about a quiet place so let me know uh in the facebook group here on the link for the link for this episode or let me know here in the comment section of the youtube episode as well too because i am curious about what y'all's thoughts on this was and that's going to do it for us. Uh, Quiet Place, definitely recommend watching. Definitely recommend buying. I wouldn't even say rent this. This is abso absolutely a buying movie. This is something that's such a good film. One of the better horror films that we've had come out in the last five years that goes right to buying at that point. Definitely pick that up. Tune in afterwards, though, you guys. You got to go to the Facebook group. Find that link because we are watching A Quiet Place here in just a bit here at 9.15. And so much fun next week next week we will be reviewing a quiet place part two so we're going to talk about that and we're also going to be discussing the conjuring the devil made me do it so we are talking two new horror films next week and then right after we're watching the conjuring the devil made me do it we're going to watch that together and i'm so excited because the conjuring universe is so so good and this film is getting great marks as well too um I'm just worried that this might be the last Conjuring film we get because obviously the Warrens do eventually die and I don't know how long they're going to try to keep up with this story. I honestly think the right idea would be to start going into uh, things that didn't happen and just make up ghosts that they ended up fighting over their career. I think that's the logical next step of where to go with this couple, honestly. Um, but we're going to start doing some new segments on the show. And I want to answer some questions for y'all on the show as well, too. So I want to hear. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want it to be horror related. You can ask me about Friday the 13th. You can ask me about Scream. You can ask my opinion on killers and deaths and blood and special effects and soundtracks and stuff like that. But I want to do a segment where I answer some of y'all's questions. And I can give you some opinions about some things that you might want to know. So I want to get a post up in the Facebook group. Give you a place to put those up. And we're going to start doing that next 
next week. And don't forget, we are going to have a spiral watch party here in just a couple of weeks. Next week, we're doing uh, Conjuring. Devil made me do it in our watch party. But the week after that, we are watching Spiral. It's already on video on demand. I'm so excited for that. And with that, finally, 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 this weekend, my episode going up with Tyler Tyler Swift from uh, the Silver Screen Breakdown, part one of our two-part series going in spoiler detail on Spiral is going up. You gotta check that out. But that's gonna do it for me, folks. I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to check out some of our previous episodes and head on over to the Facebook page so you can join up with our watch party. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.